part of you, but not necessarily from their part of you. I think that's the whole um, the whole karmic justice thing because that's 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 kind of um, what got me interested in the first place because it was it was well if you don't want course or if you, if you're not clamoring for these things how is it that you're understanding what happened or um, how do you uh, process all this or how do you move on with your life and I I'm trying to uh, to to grapple with that as well and I, and the part about the Vietnamese certainly I mean there are all sorts of I was in Takao a few years ago province and you get the the phrase uh, uh, in which is the body is is Cambodian but the head is Vietnamese mm -hmm. and they're the people who are essentially responsible for all the killings and they're the ones who who did all this but the real Cambodians didn't do this and and it's 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 reframing essentially their version of of history as uh, we should have had a, if anything, we should have a tribunal against the Vietnamese occupation of Cambodia, for example. And, and part of the debate certainly was whether to include beyond democratic Kampuchea, the period of, of uh, the People's Republic of Kampuchea, the period of 79 to essentially 89. And that was just completely off limits for the government because they rose to power that way. They're the ones who are, who came on uh, through Vietnamese, uh, through the Vietnamese invasion. I would also point out that if the Cambodians themselves don't have a history of the other Khmer uh, societies, the Angkor Thom, except, except for the fact that the French came in and discovered these, you know, th these magnificent archaeological treasures, mm -hmm. but it isn't part of their of their psyche about it. It's uh, and, and so this history, they're living in the present. They're not living in the past, and that may be better. Oh, sure. I mean, I think I think you you'd have so much post traumatic stress if they weren't mm -hmm. really, and they're able to they're able to cope amazingly well uh, as it is, uh, you know, without without really a, a functioning mental health system to, to 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 aid them in any way. Thanks. Two questions. One is the the degree of responsibility in terms of prosecution. Obviously, that generation of leaders went to Paris got radicalized, came back with an ideology that they took to be their own and endeavored to impose that upon a people is different than somebody way down the line who's scared for their life and carrying out certain <laughs> orders from above mm -hmm. and would have been executed if they hadn't done it. So that, that concept enters into justice and into prosecution. Right, and right. certainly on that level, there's a certain level of prosecution possible within the country without going whole hog and trying to, to find everybody. So that's the first question. Second question is this relatively passive approach to justice, which we see in a country like Cambodia, this, which may be derived from the concept of karmic justice, is it possible that these horrors came about in the first place because of that relative passivity in the face of the, of the question of justice. Mm -hmm. The very fact, how is it that this, this horrible thing took place in, what, in a country that nobody imagined that this could take place? Right, right. So that going back, you know, uh, before the events to find out why is it that this kind of thing could happen? Well, uh, okay, so your first question on the top versus the lower level, um, certainly, I think the tribunal recognizes that it's impossible to go <laughs> anywhere beyond five. And I'm actually told that, that uh, the, the prime minister said, five, give me a list of five, and that's it. You know, And they got, I think he got six, and then the list came back as five. So essentially, there's a limit, and it's, it's this limit at five, I think, it will be, uh, despite the growing budget for the tribunal. Uh, for people who were at the bottom, You've got a case now, for example, of, of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, um, his name is Hornam Hong, accused of participating in a detention center as, as one of the work group leaders. So he, he, you know, he's still a prisoner like everybody else, but he's somehow the leader of the prisoners or the leader or telling the prisoners what to do. And as a result, uh, I think one of the opposition leaders is accusing him of that, and he's, he keeps suing anybody who says that he was ever part of the, of the Khmer Rouge themselves. It's very difficult. I mean, the, the Minister of Finance has, has, has a, a CV that says between 75 and 78, he was, a, he was a in forced labor, but in fact, he was a secretary in the Khmer Rouge regime. So what does that mean? I mean, how, how, how can we treat somebody like that um, 
will that person ever meet justice? Does that person ever need to meet justice? And then you get you know child soldiers. You get people who were forced to, to do things uh, unless uh, you know unless they did it, they'd be killed. Certainly, I don't think anybody wants to uh, open that can of worms and uh, and uh, and and see w what's in there um, about passivity. I think that one of the theories. I don't know. I, you know, when I read about this, I thought it was very odd. Uh, it was. I th it might have been Roland Joffe the director of the Killing Fields talking about how because Cambodians have to be monks and because there's this society that essentially avoids confrontation, uh, there's continuously a kind of pressure put on you and maybe after a while, if you want to psychoanalyze this, they, they go crazy and that's what happens. The Khmer Rouge uh, you know, went berserk. Um, there's certainly this idea that the bombing by the U.S. angered the Khmer Rouge, and then they ended up doing much worse to the population than they would have if they hadn't been bombed. I mean, I think it's it's a lot of hypotheticals and, and counterfactuals at this point because we don't really know. We don't really. I mean, there's no precedent for how this can be. I mean, some scholars would say that that uh, Cambodia, Angkor society, the the uh, the period in which you know Cambodia was at its apex with the Khmer Empire. It had to be extremely violent to to be able to to conquer most of Thailand, uh, probably all of Vietnam, and 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 large portions of of, of the rest of the uh, Southeast Asian subcontinent. And maybe that that's the, this warrior heritage that's coming about and continues onward, even though it's it's continuously suppressed through Buddhism essentially and peaks <coughs> out, you know, when whenever it overflows. I, I don't know. I don't want to venture into that, and it's quite quite speculative, but uh, 